Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to take advantage of new features inside InDesign to keep more of the formatting when you export for EPUB. You have to remember that InDesign, while it's a, more, it's a robust layout tool that pretty much lets you do anything you want, the EPUB standard is not there. It's just not a, a, a media-rich you know, layout format, at least not yet. It's, coming, it's come a long way since I first started working with it, but it's still things that we can't do that we can easily do inside InDesign. So let's take a look at um, what I'm talking about here. So I have two documents open. Uh, the first document is my, actually, let's go to my start document here. My start document uh, kind of looks like, you know, I got a nice cover there. Looks cool. And if we go to the next page, it's here. Let's go to preview mode. We've got uh, a nice table of contents and, you know, link, these would be hyperlinks and, you know, images and, Copyright notice down there. It's kind of cool. And if we keep going, we've got some text. We've got images side by side. We've got uh, text here with images side by side. And the beauty of this document is if you were to say print, you would pretty much get exactly what you're seeing on screen. However, if you were to, and if you were to say export to PDF, you'd get pretty much exactly what you're seeing on screen. But when you export to EPUB, EPUB has no concept of things side by side like this. This is very simple, easy, basic layout and InDesign. But EPUB likes things straight down one after another. It's like a list of objects on the page, whether the text images or in, in the new case of EPUB movies. So when you start putting things side by side like that, EPUB says, well, I got to put it somewhere. Can't put it on the side. I'm going to stick it either here, 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 or here. So that's what people run into where they start to format things and they're, they're not, they don't end up looking like anywhere near like what they did inside InDesign. So I'm going to show you an example here. Let's go back to the uh, first page of this document. And I'm going to go to my final document. And if I were to flip through these pages, they look exactly the same visually. And they would export exactly the same for PDF and they would print exactly the same for print. The difference is what I've done between these two documents and I'm going to show you that now um, on my device. So let's go here, let's uh, scoot this over and I have an iPad mini here running the iBooks app. In the iBooks app I have two versions. I have the start version of that document and I have the final version. The start version is the very first one. Notice that it doesn't even have a cover. It's basically just the text that says neighborhood guide. And when I open it, I get um, a nice cover there on, as an inside page, which is nice. And let's, uh, let's go to the start document in InDesign and let's flip to the next page. Okay, keep in mind, that's what that page is supposed to look like. But when we go here, things are not in the right order. They're there, they're just not where they're supposed to be. And that's because EPUB just exports the stuff in the order it thinks it should go in. And where are my images? Oh, there's one. Okay, there's the Old Town image. And there's the Green Light District image. And notice they're not even the same size anymore. Even though in InDesign, they are the same size. And if we go to the next page, there's the Old Town page there. And I don't even see the table anymore. It's missing. Well, it's got to be here because, you know, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't eliminate it. Wait, 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 go back. Where are my images? My images at the bottom of the page aren't there either. If I keep going, eventually, oh, there they are. I found them. There were several pages in because they got exported at the end of a section before the next section because nothing told it otherwise what order they should be in. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's go back to the library and let's take a look at the same document, but in its final form. Old Town, text and image where it's supposed to be. 
text and image where it's supposed to be. Image with the table and the images side by side and the big image where if we go to the next page, there it is. So the stuff is there. And even though it's not side by side, it is there. It's in the order I've dictated it should go in. And that's what we're here to learn today. Okay, so now let's back up. Let's uh, go back to InDesign. And let's take a look at what makes the, the final document work and the start document not work. Well, there's some new things that were introduced in both InDesign CS55 and InDesign CS6. In uh, both those versions, we have new ways of handling things. Now, first of all, the cover, um, you know, you could build this cover inside InDesign. You could place that background photo and then start putting your text or, or vector images on top. But EPUB itself has no concept of on top. So if I put local neighborhood guide as text frames or images on top, that stuff would just get scooted down below the image. So in this case, the cover was built in Photoshop and exported in this case as a JPEG and placed inside InDesign as one solid piece. That way, um, there's no concept of something being on top of it. It's all made as one thing inside Photoshop and placed as one thing inside InDesign. So that's how the cover was done for the inside. We'll talk about how we get the actual cover on the cover when we do the export. All right, next. And again, keep in mind that between the final document and the start document, they look exactly the same, but what makes one work and what makes one not work? Well, what makes this one work is the way that we can tell it what order to put things in. So we have an articles panel new inside InDesign. And with the articles panel, we can either create an empty article first or select our article. But before we create that article, I want to tell it, since this text is all one piece, I want to tell it where these images go. So I'm going to say, I'm going to click on this first image and notice this new blue box here. This is new inside, uh, I believe, CS55 and, and of course CS6. This is our new anchor box. We can just simply drag this where we want to anchor it. And the beauty of it is it doesn't change the position of the image, size, or anything else. So this document will still print exactly the way we see it. And if we anchor this one, we get it anchored as well. So now we've given it some structure. We've given it some order. So it knows to put Old Town text and then that image, Green Light District text and then that image, even though visually for the print and PDF, they're side by side. Now we go here and we simply say that we want to create a new article. We call that new article TOC. And because I had the table of contents frame selected, it automatically put it in there for me. And then if I want this um, copyright notice to go next, I just drag it in right into the articles panel. And I can drag these up and down in the order I want them to go in. So now I'm dictating what order to put things out on, on this particular page or next set of pages. So table of contents goes first. Since these are anchored, they automatically go in with it. And it knows to put that in last, not first. Okay, so we go to the next page and we do the same kinds of things. We say that this is going to be anchored um, after Old Town or before Meridian, either one. And the same thing, this gets anchored, this gets anchored next. So now those two objects go out in order. For the images here, we do two things. First, we select them if we want to keep them side by side because again, EPUB has no concept of side by side. So we have to fake it and basically make it think that it's one thing simply by grouping it together. Now that that's been grouped, I can anchor this anywhere I want and it knows to put that afterwards. Okay, great. So now that's been anchored in and uh, we'll talk about keeping the image this size that we want, but we would anchor this image in as well. And we just keep going. Now, of course, once that's all done, we can make an, a new um, Old Town 
um, article. And we can then tell it what order things will go out in. Simple as that. So you go through your document, giving it this structure using the articles panel, grouping, and inline graphics or anchored objects. In this case, we're using anchored objects. So that way we don't have to change anything about our printed version or our PDF version, and we get a, a smarter EPUB. Now let's talk about the enhancements in the ex actual export dialog box. I'm gonna go over to my final version here where all of that anchoring and everything's been done. And then we go to File, Export, and we choose EPUB. And then we get to tell it some new things. First of all, in CS6, we now get to tell it the EPUB version. And this is, of course, going to be a catch-22 like anything else when you start talking about versions. The EPUB um, 2.01 standard was approved way back in 2007. So think about all the devices that were built since 2007. It's now 2013. Okay, so you pretty much know this standard will work across pretty much things that have been built that most people are carrying today. But then there's EPUB 3.0 that supports more layout, more things, audio, video. But it may not work on older devices. So that's going to be the catch. And, I, you know, I'm not saying 2.0 will also support um, video if the device supports it. But 3.0 is going to give you more. So I would stick to 2.01 if you're going to do wide distribution. If you're going to only care about the people that have the newest devices, then go for 3.0. Next, to actually get that cover to be on the cover, we now have a cover option. And that cover option can either be none, which is what we saw on the very first one. Take the whatever that first page is and make it the cover. So even if you built the cover inside InDesign by stacking things on top of each other, you can say rasterize that first page, make that first page an image. And that way I get to keep my cover looking the way it looked. Or best option, from a file. Because when you say from a file, what you're saying is, I've taken the time to go in Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, and make a cover that looks great on mobile devices. And I'm going to use that file for my export for my EPUB. So my printed cover can be CMYK, built-in InDesign, whatever. But the cover that actually gets exported will be the one that I choose. Okay, content order. And again, new option, same as the articles panel versus based on page layout. So the articles panel is going to be the overall ruler, if you have articles, as to what order things get exported out in. Okay, okay, next, image. This is another big one. Preserve the appearance from the layout, whatever pixels per inch you want. So again, you want a higher density for the new retina displays or things like that, you can do that. And image size is going to be relative to page. This is a big one. So instead of the image always being small for smartphones and the smallest common denominator, it will, if you've spread out the image in your InDesign document to be the width of the column or the width of the page, this will keep it that size on the devices that can support that size. So great. Last but not least, if we go to advanced, split the document. This is a kind of a big one too. You get to dictate um, what style sheet you want to split on. So like every time you run into a header, that's kind of like a new page or a new section of the EPUB. And if you're a CSS savvy person, meaning you can write CSS or have someone write it for you to kind of even preserve more of your formatting, you can choose that CSS file and have that be exported with it. So that's how that EPUB was exported, keeping and maintaining the formatting that we saw um, earlier. There we go. Okay, so we've got the um, iPad and the iPhone here side by side, and we kind of saw what it looks like on the iPad. Let's go to the iPhone. So we'll go to the final one, where I kind of know the other one doesn't work well. And again, same thing. Now in this case, the image didn't fit on the page like it did there. And that's again, one of the caveats of 
EPUB. EPUB is going to be based on the size of size or the um, size of the reader. And what if the reader said, hey, make my fonts bigger? Or in this case, not brighter, but bigger. So now you're gonna have even less room for things on the page because the user the user said they wanted to make things bigger. That's why the formatting can't be identical because it's gonna be based on each reader doing what that reader particularly does. But there it is, it's all there, it's all formatted as best it can be for this size screen. And again, um, the EPUB did the right thing, keeping the right things in order. Notice here where it kind of did that, did, it made the table skinnier. So some of the things went to two lines. This is again, um, one of the downsides of EPUB is that it can, you know, it's, it's gonna be based on the user's screen size. So it's gonna do the best it can, but each device is gonna render things a little bit differently. But overall, we kept a lot more of the formatting than we did um, with the previous export, which basically didn't keep hardly any of the formatting. And it didn't randomly put things, um, it didn't randomly put things in different spots on the page. And even we have our movie here. So if I were to play this movie, see if this works. There's our movie. Why was I sent to this place? Playing back. I'm it went full screen, but it, the movie is playing back from the iPhone as well as if I were to play it back from the iPad. And that is supported in the export for the 2.01 format. Um, but again, you know, keep in mind the first device to support that was actually the iPad with the iBooks reader. So your experience with movies is going to vary based on what the users have. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. I hope you've learned a little bit about formatting uh, your EPUBs and exporting them out so they look more consistent and keep more of your formatting um, of what you would expect. And at least it puts you in control of the way things or the order of things as they're exported. Take care and we'll catch you next time.